Hi, I am Helen Davis and I'm here to talk about neurodiversity, uh, something that I'm quite passionate about, um, particularly seeing as I am dyslexic. Um, I'm not sure if any of you are neurodiverse who are watching this um, and you too have some superpowers. Um, I just want to share a little bit um, about myself. So um, I'm currently uh, working as a clinical lead in Sussex. Um, uh, so uh, supporting some things um, for the county. I also have my own business um, and I'm a single parent. So it's, uh, it all sounds rather grand and rosy, um, which I wish it was that easy all the time. Because behind the scenes, what you don't see is every single day I have a struggle about paperwork, about emails, ab about all these things, um, even, even technology, actually. Um, so I just wanted to share with you that despite challenges you, that you can overcome, you can actually also have it as a superpower because there is a trade-off with everything there's a balance so although it's a challenge every day there's certain gifts that I inherited um, as well but just going back to the beginning so when I was a child um, I was actually at school they did think I was dyslexic but they didn't want to label me so then I was just in their kind of mainstream school I was actually in the special needs class um, throughout primary school um, and so um, it was quite difficult because I kind of got the concepts. I just couldn't really write them down. I certainly couldn't spell them. Um, and I had some like processing issues. So that was actually where I started off uh, um, at primary school. Um, and uh, it's something that I got a lot of help with in terms of repetition. But actually repetition and the same things, doing the same way, does actually give you the same results. So didn't actually help me whatsoever redoing English and redoing English and redoing English or having things stroke through to try again. Now, what I needed and other people need is, a, is the key, the key for unlocking your own brain. Um, and that's what happened to me when I actually went and did my degree. I did a degree in psychology and counselling. Um, and when I went there, I particularly chose that university because they were great at dyslexic support. And that's when my life changed because I met my dyslexic tutor who actually did two things. One, she actually coached me a bit and helped me to deal with my anxiety and my nerves. And when I freeze, um, you know, how to overcome that. She also taught me lots of different techniques that I could try and do. Some things like mind maps, um, and um, also kind of um, getting hold of a template that I could just follow. Um, maybe turning things into a picture so that I got it. Um, so for example, for an, an essay, instead of just um, like, off you go, good luck. I used to do in my exam, the first thing, I used to write a mind map, little spidergram with all the different ideas I was gonna do. And then I would sequence it so it's in a logical order because my problem's logic um, in that perspective. So, you know, I went through all that. Um, um, and that really helped me. That framework gave me an approach that then I could actually go through and answer those exam questions. Then later in life, I found that my disability didn't help in lots of other ways. Um, as a nurse on the ward, I had no idea. But actually, um, I used to write, this is before computers, so that's how old I am. Um, I used to write um, the referral letters um, and I didn't realise that the junior sister on that ward was rewriting every single one that I wrote. She didn't want to tell me because she didn't want to offend me because I was all right at a nurse, but my letters were shocking. Um, so I didn't get to learn from that, but I was very grateful that somebody actually was you know that caring um, enough about me um, but that's the thing is like um, you will actually have moments when people look out for you as well equally I've had a lot of discrimination for being dyslexic as well nearly not got jobs for it or actually in one case losing a job because of it um, so it's not all been easy going in terms of that and it's really funny you know I'm actually completely out uh, um, as being gay. Uh, no problem, completely um, out of the closet on that one. Disability though, 
that's a bit more in the closet and has been for a lot of my career because I was like, will I be discriminated against or won't I? Do I want to disclose it or don't I? I didn't trust the system. I've seen that I'd been treated differently and I did actually genuinely worry about it. Um, now I'm quite lucky. I feel very privileged that I'm in a senior position so that actually instead of being um, in fear I can actually be a role model and actually a neurodiverse champion because um, that's really important now that I can actually stand and be counted and actually I guess pay forward all the fantastic help and support I, I, I got along the way and also fight the discrimination as well um, so that's um, that's what I, I, I the approach I now take and I do disclose it but that's only been something later in my career that I felt in a position when I could do that do you identify with any fear um, about a skill you might not have? A little worry about maybe you're not good enough um, or you get found out. Um, you know, it, it, it can actually, you know, um, really impede how you do and how you shine. So what can be counterproductive to that is actually having people you confide in that you actually, if you get stuck for something, you actually ask for help from people who you, who you trust. Um, and that you can build up your own network. I can tell you now, I'm very much good friends with a lot of admin people. Why? Because they have the skill set I don't. I could never do what they do, and I massively respect them. Um, and so that's what actually a way around. So the other thing is being part of a team, um, actually seeing who's in your network and in, who's in your team. Part of the dyslexia or any neurodisability is the actual problem you have whatever it is in processing or approaching or you you can't quite um, see it in the same way maybe physically or whatever it is that creates real tangible issues and problems but actually there's always some sort of work around and it's how you can approach it now it's not all been bad news um, i've had the the those problems but it's also given me some other enhanced senses um, bit of a spider sense sometimes when I see someone I'm like hmm I can get a feeling for how they really are feeling quite high empathy um, when somebody talks to me I will see what they're saying but then I'll also see behind the mask that we all wear um, and so um, I, that's actually really helped me understand uh, um, things and, and actually I can problem solve I might not be able to do it in a linear fashion um, sort of um, approach like I said mine is sequential but I can make links between lots of different seemingly sort of sporadic dots um, I can make pull it together and make it something meaningful I can get the strategy and turn it into something that's plain English and workable because actually I've needed to do that all the time so this is something then that I can use and share for others because I don't think particularly like in a linear way, I will be able to come up with problem solving skills that are unique, that are very creative. Now, in that respect, you and everyone else there has a special superpower. So maybe take a moment to think, what is yours? What is it that you've got that you can really make a difference in the world with? And actually the stuff that you're not good at, I wouldn't just focus that all the time. Our minds seem to, I don't know why, we always seem to focus on all the things we can't do. I'm not sure if you ever focus on all the things you can do. One of the techniques that is, is helpful for me because I can have that tendency as, as well to just think of the bad moments rather than the good is something we call um, a positive affirmation diary. Sounds a bit posh, but really isn't. So basically what you do, is you write um, a few things um, about about six things um, in, at some point in the day whenever works for you um, which is a positive statement um, about what you want to believe and and actually so for example if i don't feel i'm good enough i would actually write different positive statements as to why i actually am good enough what is a you know so today i managed to finish a report Today, I managed to get the shopping in and come back. Today, um, I, you know, um, I, I managed to put up some DIY. Whatever it is for you, is that you put those things down. And if you keep putting those things down, 
building up day after day after day, then actually that helps you build up some concrete evidence that you can actually then look at. So obviously neurodiversity is lots of different issues. Um, and I particularly know um, about um, dyspraxia and dyslexia more than other things. But there are also lots of other websites out there. So do get online and see what else is there. Get in touch with other people who might be neurodiverse and see what their like hints and tips are. Um, I'm always happy to share mine with anyone who's out there. If you need any support at all, please do contact me. Um, um, and um, I can make sure that they share my contact details um, with you as well. Um, so just realize that you're, you're not alone. Um, and I found, uh, interestingly, my dyslexia didn't just affect like what you think paperwork and spelling. It also affected me as a parent. Now that I wasn't expecting because I thought I kind of got over my dyslexia because I don't think logically, can I just say getting a toddler out on time is a major feat <laughs> for anyone who manages it. But for me, it was that little bit more difficult because there were so many more things I needed to make sure I brought. And in the end, I created a backpack which actually had everything in. And then as when I came home, as soon as I'd used anything, I'd re-put it back in. Then I knew that was the bag. And I didn't have to think about everything I had to pack in advance, which takes me an extraordinarily long amount of time. So this way, we had a chance of actually getting to whatever event we were going on time. The other thing is, I'm terrible at losing things. I go through debit cards like at a rate or not. Not because I spend the money, but because I've lost the card. <laughs> so what I do is I actually have two bank accounts deliberately. Because when I lose one bank account, then I've got the other card or I haven't used a credit card, but try and stay away from those. But I deliberately have done that because I know that I will at some point lose it. So if there's something you know that you will regularly do <laughs> is a problem, what is the way you can counteract it? Um, and the other thing, keys, oh, I'm shockingly bad. I've, I have actually many times locked myself out. I don't know if you've done that. I know I have many times. Um, and um, also, where are my keys? You know that? I'm sure they're here somewhere. Normally when I have to rush off for a meeting and I'm late for, you know, as usual. Um, so what I've done now is I have my keys in a, the same spot. So I know that that's my go-to place. Um, so there's different things like that that helped me get through the day and everyday life. Um, and so I would say for anyone out there, think about what you things out there. And also um, for anyone, for any of your list that you um, are great at, there'll be a list that you're not so great at. But actually, you've got two choices with that not so great list. Either don't do it at all. Really, right, why call yourself that stress? But if you have to, then actually what can you do to counteract that um, the problems that, that arise from that, you know? So you do have that choice as well. Um, and I just want to say thank you to Belongcom for actually being able to give me a part to actually share this about neurodiversity. Um, I want you to know that you guys are not alone out there if anyone's identified with what I'm going through. Um, and um, that whatever is your superpower, I wish you all the best. Thank you. Bye.